Colorado High School Activities Association football is on Morgan County's B106 and the Eastern Plains Sports Network tonight from Holy Family High School in Broomfield. It's the visiting Fort Morgan Mustangs against the Holy Family Tigers. We just had the kickoff a few seconds ago. Charlie Langford returning it to the 35-yard line, but the Mustangs called for a block in the back. And, Brian, we don't do the nickel packages as much anymore, but certainly a nickel package would be avoiding mistakes on the road. As you can tell, the wind has really kicked up to begin this game, so we'll do our best to get it in without the uh, compromising wind. But, again, mistakes and penalties are not going to get the job done, especially against an opponent that's better than the previous two opponents. Yeah, that's for sure. They, they can't afford to have any mistakes, and they're going to have to get some turnovers here to try and stay in the game. First and 10 for the Mustangs at their own 35-yard line. Opening kickoff brought to you by Buildings by Design. Mustangs coming out of the pistol formation. Game time temperature at 75 degrees, but the wind makes it feel a little bit cooler, but not too bad. In the backfield is David Keller. J.J. Marquez turns left. Keller goes right. It's a busted play, and that is awful. Marquez back to the line of scrimmage. Mustangs, Kevin, cannot have that on the very first play. That was a mistake by either the quarterback or the running back. Right. As you mentioned earlier, they could, could have started off on the 35, a decent run back for Keller, but they get pushed back to the 25. Then on the first play, they lose it. Well, I guess they get back to the line of scrimmage. So they're behind the downs already. Second down and 10 at the 25-yard line. The Mustangs go in 2-0 and in lead play and 3-4 and overall. Lutheran defeated Holy Family. Holy Family's 4-3 and overall, 1-1 one and one in lead play. Two receivers to the right. There's the handoff running wide to the right is Keller, and he cuts it back to the inside, and he squeezes a few yards out of it to the 29-yard line. I don't know if he should have kept bouncing that to the outside, Brian. It looked like he had a lane there, and for some reason he went inside, but still a four-yard pickup. Yeah, it looked like it was open around the outside, but there was a guy out there that kind of turned him back in. But He took a beating at the end of that play. There was a lot of hard hitting, and hopefully he holds up. Jordan Nunez made the tackle. Third down and six to go for the Mustangs at their own 29-yard line, wearing their road whites. Johnson and Langford, the receivers out to the left. And Chase Redding on the slot to the right. Yeah, you don't want to go three and out here to begin this game. On third down and six from the 29, Marquez back to throw. Pressure coming, and he's going to be taken down. Got to get rid of the ball. It did not. He's taken down to the 20-yard line. There were a couple of Tigers there, including Matthew Sakaris. And that's a loss of about eight yards, fourth down, and 14 to go for Fort Morgan. And Chase Redding is probably going to be busy tonight, considering that Holy Family's got a pretty decent defense. And there's, as you mentioned earlier, a pretty stiff breeze that's a little bit in the face of him as he punts. Dominic Gabriel is the return man and the punt is fielded to the 45 and down there is Charlie Langford to make the play and then other Mustangs come in on the hit and that's a kickoff or a punt I should say of 34 yards with no return but Holy Family's got good field position and now let's see how the Mustangs can defend Holy Family the one thing we know is that Ryland Cooney has nine touchdown passes on the season but 13 interceptions and if the Mustangs can contain him and can pick him off one or two times, that'd be great. Chase McNaughton is the lead back for Holy Family from the pistol. There's the give right up the middle and a gain of one. Oscar Ramirez cleans up McNaughton at the 46-yard line. Second down and nine. And gentlemen, I think it's time for the defense to step up because last week it was really about the offense. Yeah, I, I think the defense is going to have to step up. Otherwise, it's going to be a quick game. Second down and nine to go for Holy Family at their own 46-yard line. Two receivers split out to the right, one to the left. Cooney to throw deep along the left side receiver out there, and it's caught. There's going to be pass interference as well inside the 25 as Langford never turned around. Let's see where the ball is spotted, and that'll be declined. It was almost caught off of Langford's helmet. But the pass goes inside the 25, and it's a gain. Uh, are they going to spot this football sometime today? Because they still haven't done it. And there you go. It's going to be a gain of 31. And that pass was caught by Jackson Grable. They've got three solid receivers. Yeah, it wasn't really that bad of a 
coverage. No, it wasn't. Again from the pistol, first and 10 from the Mustang, 23-yard line. There's the gift to McNaughton, running right, back to the middle. Ramirez spins him to the ground at the 20-yard line. Second down and seven yards to go. So far, Fort Morgan's rush rush defense is playing well as they have all season. It's the pass defense that is going to be challenged tonight. Well, and here's the thing. If Fort Morgan can keep Holy Family within about three touchdowns, it's not going to be a victory, but... You know, Holy Family beat Frederick by a point in Frederick, and Fort Morgan lost by 34. You go on that scale as Grable in motion to the right on the jet sweep to the outside. Breaks out of a tackle, but then he's going to be hammered out of bounds, maybe for a gain of half a yard along the Fort Morgan sideline. And that is David Keller with the initial hit, and Colin Duckworth cleaned it up. That's a couple of seniors getting the job done. No gain for Jackson Grable, third down. And about seven yards to go. Quickly up to the line of scrimmage. 7.51 to go. Quick moving first quarter already. Back to throw is Cooney. Pressure coming off the right side with Aguirre. Throwing along the sideline. Caught at the six. Touchdown. Wide open along the sideline was McNaughton. He was left uncovered out of the backfield. It's a 20-yard touchdown pass from Ryland Cooney to Chase McNaughton. And less than four and a half minutes into the game, Holy Family is on the board. Yeah, it looks like uh, the Mustang coach are saying he was past the line of scrimmage when he threw it. But they're not I, having any of it. Yeah, I, I looked, and he looked like he was still a yard behind. What I didn't like was the block that was downfield while the ball, ball was in the air. PAT is good. And the extra point makes this a 7 to nothing game keep it right here man these papers are flying all over the place we're just and we like to use as little paper as possible but in football so many numbers that it's really unavoidable at this point nonetheless they go down the field on a drive that went 55 yards and holy family with a seven nothing lead 740 to go in the opening quarter if you notice we're on the air early because it was a seven o'clock kickoff nothing corrected on max preps but that's nothing new and that's not Max Preps' fault. You got The home school's got to take care of that. Although the website said 6 o'clock, even Brian was wondering when you texted me, hey, we're leaving uh, pretty really, early. Yeah, and we hadn't heard anything about it except an early takeoff time. And there's a high short kickoff fielded at the 8 by Keller along the left sideline to the 20, a seam to the 30, and then Keller runs into a... A few Holy Family Tigers down at the 33, a return of 25 yards. That's where the Mustangs will take over. If you don't get a first down, that's okay. But here's the deal. Quarterback and running back have to be in sync. No penalties. There's already been multiple penalties against Fort Morgan. One of those on special teams, one of those defensively. I mean, those are things that are unacceptable. At this point, this is game number eight. First and ten for the Mustangs at the 33 on the left hash mark. Pistol formation, Marquez barking out the signals, looking over towards the sideline for play instructions. Light crowd so far on the Holy Family side, but the student section starting to fill in. Awaiting the snap, there it is. Handoff to Keller, running to his left. He's got nowhere to go. He is stacked up at the line of scrimmage and driven back by a host of Tigers. Second down and 10 to go. Safe to say, Kevin Rohde, the Mustangs are not going to have the same success as they did last week on the ground. No, the last couple weeks they were playing a little softer defenses. Holy Family solid all the way across, playing a 4-2 with a strong safety walking up. So they're, they're ready to stop Fort Morgan's running game. Second down and 10 for the Mustangs at their own 33-yard line. 7-0 Holy Family, a 20-yard touchdown pass from Ryland Cooney, his 10th of the season. It went to Chase McNaughton out of the backfield on a third and seven. The Mustangs had him in tough position. Play clock is running down on second down and 10. In motion to the left is Langford. Play action, rolling to his right is Marquez. Has room to run, throws to the run, complete at the 50-yard line. That's a wide open Chase Redding coming back for the football. It's a gain of 17 and a first down. And what a throw there, Brian Nickel, by the freshman. Yeah, that looked good. He rolled out. Uh, kept his composure out there and found Redding at midfield. Nice job by Redding to come back to the ball. 
That's the other thing, Brian. We've seen some drop passes as well that they have to eliminate on yep. the road. Yeah, you got to play almost a perfect game if you're going to win this tonight. First and ten, the nose of the football. It's just shy of midfield. Langford in motion to the left on the jet sweep, looking for a block. Gets it from Keller, cuts it to the inside, across the 45 to the 44. It's a gain of six. Second down and four. There's a good running play. As the Holy Family tackler was Jace Grunderson, a 5'11", 160-pound senior. Yeah, one thing Coach Davies said was last week when they got that uh, pass to Johnson, that kept the safety from coming up into the box so much, so maybe they, that will happen tonight. On second and four from the 44, middle of the field, the Mustangs trailing 7 nothing under six minutes to go in the opening quarter in Broomfield. This is the second-to-last road game of the regular season. Brian, Kevin, and I will be in uh, Denver for the Saturday morning game against Northfield. That'll be a week from Saturday. Handoff, Keller hit at the line of scrimmage. Actually hit in the backfield, but got back to the line of scrimmage. The initial penetration came from Santiago Guerrero, only a sophomore. Keller now with three carries for four yards after going for over 220 last week. Third down and a long four. And as you can tell, the wind continues to play havoc. Yeah, Keller's not going to have, as you said earlier, he's not going to have the success, at least early on, that he had last week. From the pistol, Marquez to throw along the sideline, complete underneath the Johnson along the 35-yard line and tackled. He went back a little bit, almost lost the first down. But Johnson with a gorgeously run pattern, and it's a gain of 14 for the Mustangs, and a drive continues at the 30-yard line of Broomfield, of Holy Family. Yeah, Fort Morgan's offense is starting to click. The, the safeties are playing back a little bit. So take advantage of that short passing game. On first and 10 for Fort Morgan at the Holy Family 30-yard line. Let's see if Keller gets it here. In motion to the right is Bosworth. There's the handoff to Keller. Up the middle, down after a gain of one to the 29. Second down and nine yards to go. There's a big hole off to his left. I don't know if he didn't see it or he just didn't think he could make it over there and kind of ran into a pile. Yeah, sometimes, you know, it's easier for us to see it, but it was there. Four and a half to go in the opening quarter. The Mustangs looking for the equalizer. Two receivers split out to the left and one to the right. They're coming on a blitz. And this time the handoff to Keller right side and it paid off for Holy Family. A big loss there of close to five yards. That's called a solo tackle by Braden Bach. An outside linebacker, a loss officially of four. Third down and 13. And that's where you wish you could have called an audible. Yeah, I don't right. know what kind of yeah. leeway that he gets up if he can or not. Probably no. not right now. No, so. I mean, if Brian Nichols is quarterback, it's yeah. a different story. But there's experience, and then, uh, yeah, it's too tough. Oh, yeah. But sometimes an audible could backfire. But you kind of saw it. They had an extra man at the line of scrimmage. On third and 13 for the 33. Though that's an early snap. And you got to keep going with that play. Marquez rolling to his left, get rid of the football. And now he's going to roll to his right. He's getting a block. He throws in a run, and it's caught underneath by Johnson at the 30. And then he's tackled at about the 29 or 28 yard line. That's on the center because nobody else moved. That was snapped early, and it caught by Marquez by surprise. That is a tremendous play just to gain four yards. It's fourth down and nine. And credit J.J. Marquez. I mean, he pulled a magic trick there. He got out of there, but he also had some nice blocking from behind. He had some uh, offensive linemen that came back and was picked up the uh, defensive line that was coming after him. So You wish the receiver, one of the receivers, would have gone downfield. Yep. On fourth and nine for the 29. Again, looking over to the sideline for play instructions. And they're going to run out of time. Call yeah. timeout. Yeah, they have to call their first timeout. Timeout for the Mustangs. But heck, they put together an excellent drive. They picked up a third and long and a pass to Redding. There was another one to Johnson on a third down as well. And J.J. Marquez so far is three for three for 35 yards. And we're seeing a freshman kind of maturing almost into a sophomore. You know, he's got that freshman body, but 
I think he's uh, I think he's graduated a few notches here over the last three games. Yeah, he's you know we're eight games into it. And, you know he's he's not a freshman anymore per se. Well, he is he is a, a freshman, but uh, he has almost a year under him uh, back at quarterback. So, uh, but he's done a good job, especially on this drive here. Nice passes downfield and also getting out of uh, trouble in the backfield. It'll be fourth down and nine, three thirty-one to go in the opening quarter. Holy Family seven, Fort Morgan nothing. As you can tell, the windy conditions are prevalent. Although the game time temperature was at 75 degrees and the Mustangs are going for it. And even if they don't get it, and they're putting Holy Family in a very precarious position. Not not super, it's not like it's inside the 10, but they're not going to be starting at the 45 like they did on their first drive. Noah Aguirre is lining up on the inside slot to the right. Two receivers to the left. Redding is out to the right from the pistol. Coming on a blitz again. Aguirre in motion to the left. Fourth and nine. Marquez awaiting the snap, is going to roll out to his left, gets a block from Duckworth, still rolling, still rolling. He stops, sets, throws, it's tipped, incomplete. Broken up at the 20, Charlie Langford wanted interference. But it was broken up over there by the Holy Family corner, Joseph Eiton, and a takeover first incomplete pass thrown by J.J. Marquez. Yeah, Langford had a little bit of a chance to maybe get that, but it would have been a pretty pretty good catch because uh, he was getting hit by two or three guys right as the ball got there or soon before or after. Almost had a chance off the deflection, but he was already midair. Holy Family at their own 29, pistol formation. McNaughton in the backfield. He's got the lone touchdown of the game and the carry right up the middle. McNaughton with a huge hole across the 35. He's into the secondary at the 50. Along the right sideline to the 30. McNaughton might go to the 20. He's at the 10. It's a touchdown for Holy Family. Chase McNaughton scores for the second time in the game. 71 yards and the Tigers lead the Mustangs. 13 to nothing. Yeah, you had to do a little bit of dance in there because Fort Morgan kind of had the initial hole plugged up. But then once he got into the linebacker level, he just outran everybody. And that was some nice moves. Yeah, some he's, good speed. Yeah, he's fast out there. He got out there in the open and they weren't catching him. Will Nolan to attempt the extra point. And the kick is up and that is right down the middle. 3-0-9 to go in the opening quarter. Holy Family 14, Fort Morgan nothing on B-106 and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. Along with Brian Nickel and Kevin Rohde, I'm John Beltran. 14 nothing Holy Family. A 20-yard touchdown pass from Cooney to McNaughton. And then Chase McNaughton goes for 71 yards. And we are nearly nine minutes into the game. And Brian Nichols about to join Kevin and I putting on a little bit of a jacket. A little bit of a jacket. And there's the kickoff. High, and this one's pretty deep. Keller at the five. Straight ahead to the 10, along the left sideline to the 20, and then he spun out of bounds and ushered out at about the 23-yard line. Well, the first drive was not good. The second drive was excellent for Fort Morgan. Now let's see if the third one gets him into the end zone to cut this lead in half. Yeah, I think they need to keep with the short passing. and the Same problem that they've had all year. They need to figure out how to keep the pressure off of Marquez and open up a bigger holes for Keller. I mean, they ran well last week and the week before, but uh, that wasn't Holy Family. Exactly. First and 10 with a football placed at the 24-yard line. Pistol formation once again. Two receivers out to the right. And there's the give and a big haul for Keller right up the middle. And a first down bursting across the 30 to the 34, a gain of 10. Kevin Rohde, that was on cue. That was that was right, yeah. And it was a little different play, a little slower developing. Sometimes, like last week, the quick hitters work better. Sometimes against different defense, you have to kind of wait and let the defend, uh, your offensive line get their block set up and then make the right cut. At the 34-yard line with... Two minutes and 35 seconds to go in the opening quarter. Holy Family with a two touchdown lead. Marquez awaiting the snap from the 34. Play action, back to throw, pressure coming. The pass is caught at the 40 yard line and short of a first down, Chase Redding makes the play. And that was thrown under considerable duress 
and it's a gain of seven, second down and three, and how about J.J. Marquez looking very good in the early going? Yeah, he's, he's had a lot of opportunities to see different things, and he's responding well to a little more pressure than he's had lately. Well, he's four out of five now for 42 yards. Well, and again, it, it looks like he's surveying the field a little bit better. But that pass was not that easy to make out to his right. On second and three from the 41-yard line. Again, coming on a run blitz. And Marquez will keep it himself looking for a seam. And he's very close to a first down, right up the gut to the 44. They might have to measure this thing as the play was made. Sakaris makes the play. No, that looks, wow, they're going to give him a first down. But that looks short to me. Uh, now they're going to adjust the football, which would be a first down. It, it's a game of inches, even in football. At the 44-yard line, Redding and Langford are the receivers to the left side. And Johnson to the right, Aguirre on the inside slot. The Mustangs have picked up two first downs over the first three plays of this drive. Again, looks like a run blitz. And this will be a give to Keller running to his right. And he still is on his feet after he was hit at the 45-yard line. Did the ball come loose at the 48? That's what Holy Family is saying. But the ball is still in the hands of... It looks like it was in the hands. Is that Weedrick? Yep. Yeah, it was fumbled, but Weedrick recovered it. It's a gain of four for Keller right at the point of attack there. I think it's Ben Fritzler. Oh, it is Fritzler. Oh, yeah. You're right. Yeah, Weedrick is where they are. It is Fritzler, the freshman. I didn't even see him in on that play. Uh -uh. Second down at six of the 48-yard line. 30 seconds to go in the opening quarter. Same formation. Marquez back to throw. No pressure. Out towards the sideline. Complete at the 41-yard line. Keisha Johnson is knocked out of bounds inside the 40 to the 39. It's a gain of 13. And this Fort Morgan passing game is looking special right now. Third reception for the senior Johnson. Right. Holy Family seems to be happy to just sit back in a zone and give us all the underneaths while they try to put pressure on our quarterback and so far that's not working for them and Fort Morgan's getting a little success. Again, well what do we talk about? The defense has to start getting the job done. This is a reversal of what we saw early on in the season when the offense had no juice and now the defense has really struggled from the 39 of Holy Family, third first down of the drive. We have just under 20 seconds to go. 1982, that's a good year. And now, are they going to call their second timeout? Well, I guess the timeout usage really doesn't matter in the opening half as much as it does in the second half. But two timeouts there for Fort Morgan. And to be honest, it doesn't really play into it near as much as it does in college and, and definitely the pros where that one timeout, you know, means another 20 yards downfield that you can get before you have to kick that field goal. From refrigerators to vacuums and everything in between, it's B&B &B Appliance. They have exactly what you need and service it too. That's B&B &B Appliance in downtown Fort Morgan. Yeah, and Brandon Marquez is not available tonight. Soccer had a game this afternoon at Severance. So Brandon Marquez is not available. And I believe that's the finale of the regular season. I, I think they played three games in three days. Fort Morgan just beat Northridge 2-0 in a recent match after losing to Niwot. First and 10. The timeout is concluded. The Mustangs have one remaining. They're at the 39 of Holy Family. Everybody bunched inside. Langford in motion to the left. There's the handoff to Keller running off to the left. Tries to break out of a tackle. And then he lumbers his way for a yard. Yeah, they're going to have to blow the whistle. There's a late flag. There's a very late flag. That's already Keller's eighth carry in the opening quarter. I don't know if something was happening out on that left side with uh, with Redding. Redding and number 23 for Holy Family. They seem to be entangled in some sort of debate. Looks like it's going to be against Fort Morgan. With 8.57 seconds to go. Yeah, that is not good. That's going to be, should be, is that going to be a post-play penalty? It is. Which would make it a second down and 24 to go. They should wind the clock and this quarter would conclude. Let's 
see if they're going to wind the clock. Yeah, it is second yep. down. And that'll be the end of the opening quarter. Holy Family 14, Fort Morgan nothing on B106 and the Eastern Plain Sports Network. Well, they've still got to fix the sideline change. Wow. I mean, how many officials do you have out there that they can't get the job done? As we head to the second quarter, 14 0 Holy Family. 20 yard touchdown pass from Ryland Cooney to Chase McNaughton. And a 71 yard touchdown run by McNaughton. And Holy Family's only had the ball twice. And the Mustangs, after a critical penalty there on a, a personal foul, instead of a second and nine, face a second and 24. Good field position at their own 47. J.J. Marquez threw the ball extremely well in the opening 12 minutes. Keller's in the backfield. Four at the line of scrimmage for Holy Family. In motion is Langford. Back to throw pressure. Screen pass set underneath for Keller at the 50. Keller on the right sideline to the 40. Keller's going for a first down. He's got it inside the 25 to about the 20. An excellent screen pass, a beautifully executed play by the Mustangs, and a gain of 33 yards, and the Mustangs are one yard away from being in the red zone. Yeah, that was a really nice screen. You know, that, that's, some, that's one way of attacking an overly aggressive defense, especially front seven, and the Holy Family's definitely overly aggressive on their front trying to get back to Marquez, so that'll slow them down a little bit. That is one thing right there besides execution. That is tremendous play calling. Yep. Great play calling there. First and 10 for the Mustangs at the 21-yard line of Holy Family. Aguirre resets to the right. Marquez turns, hands it off to Fritzler, running right. A seam to the 15, and he pulls his way to the 10. First and goal, Fort Morgan, a gain of 11 for the freshman. Right off the right side. Nice change of pace going from Keller to Fritzler. Right, hits the hole a little bit faster. Uh, more dodgy, doesn't want to run over people like Keller sometimes does. That football is resting at the 10-yard line. We're one minute into the second quarter. Holy Family 14, Fort Morgan nothing, but the Mustangs are knocking on the door. Keller's back in there, and motion to the right is Langford. Langford on the jet sweep stops, and he's going to be taken down at the line of scrimmage. He looked for a seam to the outside. It wasn't there, and all the doors were closed in the middle full of purple jersey, second down and goal for the 10. Yeah, it just wasn't there. He couldn't get to the outside and he cut it up in the middle and it was plugged. Well, let's see what the Mustangs go with on second and 10. And you wonder how the wind affects the passing game going from this direction here in the second quarter because it didn't seem to have any effect in the first quarter. No, I, it's hard to tell as it's right out of the west or a little right. out of the southwest. Well, it didn't affect Cooney No, in the first quarter. Naked backfield, and now, do we have a delay of game? No, no false true. start against the Mustangs. Well, they overcame a second and 24. Now you have to overcome a second and goal from the 15. And as Brian said, your field goal kicker, Brandon Marquez, had a soccer match today against Severn, so he's not here. So you have three plays to make 15 yards. Although they, I'm sure they have a second kicker, but one that really hasn't attempted field goals. They asked for the clock to wind, but it's stuck at 10.08. And it's still stuck at 10.08. Now they're falling asleep everywhere, including inside the booth. On second down, Marquez, and they still haven't rolled it. Rolls, throws it to the end zone, incomplete. Yeah, yeah, Keller Guys, wide open. yeah, sorry. This drives me crazy. Yeah. People working the game, they don't know what they're doing. Third down. I mean, if they're, they're, I mean, there were two officials asking for the clock to be wound, and they still didn't start it yep. when the play commenced. On third down and goal for the 15. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to enjoy the game, don't work the game. Naked backfield, trips to the left, one receiver to the right. Marquez looking over towards the sidelines. On third down and goal, on the right hash mark. There's the snap, back to throw, 
Pressure backside, steps up, rolls out. He's going to be sacked. The ball is loose, Very and I think a lineman jumped on it. I think the only family got on it. Well, uh, no, they're signaling for yeah, Morgan football out. at the 21-yard line. But that's a loss of six, fourth and goal. There was nobody open, and there's where the freshman quarterback had to just throw it out of the end zone. Yeah. yeah. Well, you might as well throw it into the end zone now. Don't call a play that calls for your receiver to catch it under underneath and then maybe breaking a tackle. Just throw it into the end zone. You have nothing to lose, even if they pick it off. Yeah. You have Keller, Langford, and Redding, the receivers out to the left side. Johnson to the right. 14-0 Holy Family. 9-14 to go, second quarter. Again, nobody in that backfield. Marquez back to throw, no pressure. Deep along the right sideline, incomplete. Oh, Johnson had to go through his hands at the one. It might have been a little bit high, but Johnson got his hands on it. Yeah, I... What do you think, Kevin? He went up for it. You know, it's hard to tell from our vantage point. It was a heck of a throw and a heck of a try to catch it. Uh, I don't know whether he would have fallen down in the end zone. I mean, he was right at the line. Yeah. So I think you have to be encouraged by that drive either way. Yes. The Mustangs have looked yeah. better every time they've touched the football. First and 10 for the 21 yard line. Turnover on downs. Man in motion to the right. Cooney, three step drop. Looking, stepping up in the pocket. Gets pressure, throws it a run. It is caught underneath that. And, or is it picked off? Let's see. The Mustangs are celebrating because it looked like it was caught. I'm not sure what the call is out there. Did you see a reception and then maybe Fort Morgan stole it away? That's what I'm. Yep. Yes. Yep. Who's got that football? Johnson might have had it. Yeah, it's going to be ruled a reception, a gain of 13. The catch was made by Anderson Osborne, and then the Mustangs pulled it away somehow, but I'm not sure how they pulled it off. Well, I know he was kind of backpedaling, and the Mustangs were <coughs> following him and pulling right at the at the football and ended up taking it out of there. Yeah, we're near the Fort Morgan bench across the way. First and 10 for the Mustangs at the 33-yard line of Holy Family. 8.55 to go, second quarter. Trailing 14 to nothing. Pistol formation. Marquez turns, hands it off to Keller, running left. He barrels for a yard and is still on his feet. He's not going to go down, but they give him forward momentum as he's down at the 34, but he got to yeah, maybe the 32 and a half. Should be at least a yard. And again, the ball not being spotted till now. Well, close to the 31. Give him two yeah. yards. That's depends, a heck of a run by Keller. Depends which way the uh, umpire turns, whether he looks to the side, the line judge on the far side or the near side. They are off by a yard. Keller's got nine carries for 18 yards, second down and eight for the 31 yard line. Two receivers again split out to the left side, Redding by himself to the right. Marquez awaits the snap. A long count. Play clock is at two. Back to throw. Looking to his left. Along the sideline. Complete. Johnson inside the 20 to the 17. Another solid throw and a gain of 14. Johnson now with four receptions in the game for a total of 45 yards. Let's just avoid any mistakes now that were deep in there, you know, into the red zone. We've got to play smart and and good football at this point. Well, Marquez is thrown for 102 yards in the opening half, and we still have seven and a half to go. On the left hash mark, first and 10, Langford in motion to the right, has it on the jet sweep, tries to get a block from Keller and does, but then is spun down right at the line of scrimmage. You know, there I think Charlie's just going to have to use his speed and bounce it to the outside. This stopping and cutting is not helping. That's allowing an extra defender to make the play. Right, and he's, he's going to continue to get lit up like he did on that play because that linebacker filling in from the outside loves to see him spin around then he's hold, he's standing upright and ready to get knocked over well it's a second and 10 for Fort Morgan at the 17 yard line of Holy Family now on the short side of the field are the two receivers man in motion to the left high snap Marquez to throw pressure coming deep over the middle wide open touchdown David Keller makes the catch 17 yard connection from marquez to keller and the mustangs are on the board but there's a flag down 
probably going to be roughing the passer, I'm yeah. guessing, from the fact that they're not marching back. Well, what a pass, and Keller with a beautiful route. Now let's see if they go for two. Uh, Charlie Langford looks like he's the holder. Yeah, roughing the passer. That should be assessed on the kickoff. Right. And Miguel Davila, the left-footed kicker. He's got a decent leg, Brian. Yeah. Yeah, he looked pretty good last week. He improved each time he kicked it, too, I thought. Now the extra point to be attempted by Davila. Off the hold of Langford. Let's see. The snap is perfect. The kick is up. And that is a boomer right down the middle. Six minutes, 44 seconds to go. Second quarter from Broomfield. It's Holy Family 14, Fort Morgan 7 on B106 and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. John Beltran with Brian Nickel and Kevin Rohde. Uh, Brian, the Mustangs just put together a really a solid drive there off the off the uh, turnover committed by Holy Family. It was a shorter field, but they still scored. Yeah, 33 yards, took two minutes and 11 seconds, but a nice pass by J.J. to David Keller yeah, in the end zone. So, And that was from 17 yards out. They have overcome second and 24. They've overcome a second and long on that one. And now the kickoff is for the 45 of Holy Family because of the roughing the passer penalty on the touchdown pass. Barring a big return, Holy Family's not going to have good field position. They could maybe just start at their 20 if Davila kicks it out of the end zone. And he's going to kick it well into the end zone, nearly out of the end zone. An interesting statistic will be time of possession because Holy Family's only ran like four offensive plays. Is that right? Four? So I think you're right. So their defense has been out there for a quarter and a half pretty much without any break. I've got Holy Family for seven offensive plays, seven. and that's it. First and ten from their own 20-yard line. Yeah, they had that one-yard or one-play drive. There's the give to McNaughton, left side, back up the middle, a couple of yards, and the Mustangs are there to make the play. I think that defense is all fired up after the offense gave the touchdown. And it looks like Vasquez and Aguirre made the play, a gain of two. Second down and eight to go. McNaughton's going to be over 100 yards in this half just based on that one run alone. Quickly up to the line of scrimmage, shotgun formation. The running back is off to the left, man in motion to the left. The pass out over the middle is caught and spun down near the first down marker, short of the first down for Holy Family at a gain of seven. Nate Dahl on the tackle. Number eight, Ryan Cooney's pass is caught by number 18. Oh, they gave him the first. That's yep. Be good enough for Holy Family. First Samaris down. made the catch, a gain of eight. And then there's a quarterback keeper off the fake. He breaks three tackles and still on his feet along the left side of the 45 and tackled at the 49. That should have never happened. A gain of 19. I think that might have been Yanez making the play, but that should have never happened there. Mustang's got to make those tackles and didn't make them there. So how many yards does their quarterback have running this year? Is he much of a run threat normally well he's yeah, yeah i think the second leading rusher and there's going to be a pitch to mcnaughton right off the quick snap across the 45 to the 43 he's got a gain of eight second down and two to go they're quickly up to the line of scrimmage they want to wear down this mustang defense leading for morgan 14 to 7 523 to go second quarter there's the give to McNaughton, running to his left, snaps out of a tackle, first down, jitterbug to the 30-yard line, back to the middle to the 22, and he's tackled from behind, but again, it's a run of 22 yards for Chase McNaughton, and the Mustangs are getting outworked and out-executed at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, he's the real deal. He, he's he got some moves, and he's got the speed once he breaks into the open, and he's big enough to run with some power. There's the quick snap, handoff, McNaughton, and he's hit at the line of scrimmage and thrown down for no gain. That's a heck of a play right up the middle for Christian Velasquez. A loss of one. Well, that's a positive sign. Force them to throw, but then you got to put some pressure on the quarterback. 
Second down, 11 yards to go from the 22. Down to 439 to go. Holy Family's got all three timeouts, so that's not a consideration right now. Mustangs down to one timeout. Got to come up with a big play defensively. Second down and 11 from the 22. Man in motion to the left for Holy Family. Ryland Cooney awaits the snap. Back to throw. Pressure is coming up the middle by Aguirre. Throws along the sideline complete underneath. Short of a first down to Samaras. But he does have a gain of seven yards. Third down. A third down and a long four. Closer to five yards. They'll put it at the 16-yard line. Two receivers split out to the left. This is four down territory, more than likely for Holy Family. Cooney to throw. Pressure up the middle. Rolling to his right. And Cooney snaps out of a tackle. Still on his feet. Cuts it to the 10-yard line. A flag is down. And so is Cooney at the 7-yard line. And that is coming back, gentlemen. Yeah. Yeah, because it looked like he was going to be tackled. And then he got freed up by either a block at the back. Maybe the... I don't think it was a blindside block, but we'll find out. But that's definitely against Holy Family. Although with that passing game, that penalty is not going to sway them too badly. It was committed near the line of scrimmage. You got another flag out there on the five-yard line, way on the sideline. Oh, is that where it's at? Because I saw that where they were talking to that. So it's going to be offsetting. It looks like they're coming back. Well, there is, there are two penalties. Holding Holy Family. Is there a face mask on Fort Morgan? Holding the block of the two back. against Holy Family. Well, they can only take one. They'll take the one that was committed further behind the line of scrimmage. Block the back of Holy so it's at the 27. Now you're looking at third down and 16 to go for the Tigers. Again, this shouldn't phase them because of that passing game. Fort Morgan has got to come up with a play. They're only down by seven points late in the second quarter on third down. Rolling out to his left is Cooney. Here comes the pressure, and he gets around. Duckworth still rolling, throwing along the sideline. It's caught underneath, short of a first down, well short at the 17 as Grable made the catch. A gain of 10, his second reception. It'll be fourth down, and they're going to go for it. Fourth down, and about six yards to go at about the 17-yard line. Trips to the right. They might go with something short. Back to throw is Cooney. Pressure up the middle. He's sacked at the 24. Holy Mahungas. That is the sophomore, Noah Aguirre, bringing him down to the ground, and they finally got to the quarterback of the Mustangs take over on downs. Yeah, it looks like Christian Velasquez was in there too. But nice job there by the Mustang defense. They needed that to stay in this game. And you know, all you want to do here is not give the football back to Holy Family, even if you don't score. Pick up a first down or two. Holy Family is going to use their timeouts if Fort Morgan doesn't pick up a first down. First and 10 for the Mustangs at their own 23 yard line. The lone setback is David Keller from the pistol formation. There's the snap. Keller running to his left. A stiff arm to the 25. Along the left sideline to the 30. And Keller with a first down. And there's a late hit against Holy Family. He was definitely tackled out of bounds. It's going to be a gain of about 13 or 14 yards. And then move the football forward. Chase Grunderson got him late. It's a gain of 14 yards for David Keller. How about the momentum shifting here, Brian? Yeah, it has, it has shifted. I mean, the Mustangs have taken complete control of this game. They needed that on that defensive stop, but now they've got the 15 yards added on to that nice run by Keller. Boy, if they could go into half tied, that would just uh, really deflate this home team. Well, Holy Family does receive the second half kickoff, but the Mustangs have it first and 10 at the Holy Family 48-yard line. Two receivers out to the right. Will the Mustangs keep it on the ground? They will, but nothing doing there. Keller was smashed in the backfield. Three Tigers in there. You can count them. Check that. That's Ben Fritzler, but he had nowhere to go. Second down and 13 at the 49-yard line. Yeah, they had no blocking up front at all on that play. Well, Fritzler's two carries. One for 11, one for a negative three. Now they're on their own side of the field. Marquez to throw. Pressure's coming. 
Rolls out of the pressure. Flush to his right. He fakes. He has a stiff arm to the 46-yard line. And then it looks like he was tackled out of bounds. Yeah. Where's the flag there? You got to throw the flag there. He was definitely tackled out of bounds, but there's no flag. You know you know what the difference is? A running back tackled out of bounds versus a quarterback. I don't know why that should be the difference. He does pick up six yards. Oh, no, there should be a difference. A quarterback turns yeah. into a running back, but... Yeah. I mean, I know we're all the way across the field, but it looked like a late hit to me. I think the difference on those two plays was, one was it was a good, solid hit, and over there he was diving at him as he went out of bounds and took him down, but it shouldn't make any difference. Well, this is not four-down territory. They're at the 45. They don't gain a yard here. You punt it on third down and seven for the Holy Family, 45. 14-7 Holy Family, 2.45 to go in the second quarter. There's a flag. That could be a false start. And that will be yep, a false start against Fort Morgan. Now it's going to be third and 12. And the wind is picking up a little bit, making it harder to throw. Although I don't know how hard the wind's blowing down on the the field itself. And no. Up where we are and over where the flag is are both kind of up on hills. Well, it hasn't affected either passing game. Marquez has been really, really good. Third and 12 from midfield. JJ with a deep drop. Sets throws and it's off the hands of Redding incomplete at the 38 a little bit behind him might have been able to make that catch and the Mustangs will punt with 2.45 to go before halftime that just kind of broke down nothing really came open but Redding was there I don't think I didn't want the pass was just off a little bit but JJ was kind of rushed Dominic Gabriel is their return man. The punt goes to the 12. Gabriel running to his right to the 15-yard line. And then he spins across the 25. Somebody bring him down, tackling him way too high. And he's across the 35 to the 40, a return of 28. Man, that was a punt of 38 yards, and yet it's only a net of 10. And as you mentioned earlier, Holy Family has all three timeouts. They're a passing team. 235 is plenty of time for them to march down and score. Yeah. Hopefully the defense will come up with a, another stop here like they did on that last drive. On first and ten for Holy Family at their own 40-yard line. This game began with plenty of daylight. Now it is pure night here in Broomfield. Hand off to McNaughton, jitterbugging right up the middle after starting to his left. Across the 45 to the 46 in no hurry. Tackle was made by Dominic Vasquez and Noah Aguirre. And this will be a timeout called by Holy Family. That'll be, no, that's, nope. Is that an equipment timeout? Yeah, yeah no timeout. Gain of six. Second down. Yeah, you don't want to call a timeout on just a running play. Second down and four to go at the 46. Plenty of time. 2.13 to go. Naked backfield. Cooney looks. Pressure coming up the middle. Rolls out to his right. He's got running room to the 45-yard line, and he's out of bounds. Ushered out of bounds by Colin Duckworth, but it's a first down and a gain of 14 yards for Ryland Cooney. Only a second carry for 32 yards, and even better for the Tigers, the clock stops. He's got some speed once he gets out in the open. Yeah, he's not very tall, but he motors. First down and 10 at the 40-yard line. McNaughton's in the backfield. Shotgun with a running back to his left. Hand off McNaughton. He's tackled around the ankles beautifully by David Keller. Give him a two-point takedown for that one. That's excellent technique. Yeah, he came in nice on that, nice and low. And McNaughton a little uh, gamey on his way back to the position. Maybe got a little dinged up there. Second down and nine yards to go for Holy Family at the 39. Five-step drop. No pressure. Deep over the middle. Incomplete. Oh, wide open there at the four-yard line was Samaris. But overthrown, and that would have been an easy touchdown as the Mustang defender was beat by about a yard. Yeah, he kind of, the receiver kind of short armed that, I thought. I, I think if he would have extended, he might have been able to get that one. Yeah, I thought it was there. I mean, it, it looked like at the last minute his arms just went back to his body. I, I don't, but. 
just shows that they can strike fast. Third down and nine for the 39-yard line. Cooney again back to throw. Deep along the left side, incomplete. Oh, man, wide open was McNaughton at the 26. He just overshot him. That was an easy play, an easy connection, and he just overthrew him. Yeah, he was wide open out there about the 25-yard line. and I think he just got excited. He said, wow, he's yeah. wide open and threw it over top. Well, watch out. Don't assume this is going to be a punt. Do not assume Dominic Gabriel standing at his own 48-yard line. And they have three timeouts. Yeah, I think the Mustangs, don't worry about the return here. You're not going to get much anyway. On fourth and nine for the 39, there's the snap. This will be a punt. A flailing punt. It bounces at the five into the end zone. So that's an excellent result for Fort Morgan. Only a net of 19 yards. We have 83 seconds to go. And Fort Morgan needs to pick up a first down to avoid giving the ball back to Holy Family late in the opening half. Yeah, because they still have their timeouts, and if they stop Fort Morgan on the first and second downs, they may be using them. Yeah, I think overall Fort Morgan has had a really good first half. That first drive was a little bit weak, and they made a lot of mistakes, but they played with a lot of courage, uh, considering where they are in the season and who they're playing. Good point. If this game was played a few weeks ago, this wouldn't be a 14-7 game. First and 10 for Fort Morgan at the 20-yard line. There's the pitch right. This is Keller swinging it to the outside along the sideline. Stay in bounds, and he's down after a gain of about one or two. You got to force Holy Family to use their timeouts. And there is number one with 117 to go. Oh no, they're gonna no, they haven't. Why are they not why using a timeout? Why? Why are they stopping? What is going on here? It's a gain of three. Now into a minute. I yeah, mean, it's I, I don't know like what there's they're a doing. Loose court or something. Yeah. No, they're yeah, but still, second down and seven. There's the give. Big hole up the middle. Keller first down to the thirty along the right sideline to the forty. Keller still going, and he's taken down at the forty-two. It's a gain of nineteen for David Keller. Yeah, nice job there by that offensive line. They're getting their act together right now and getting that line open. I'm still very suspicious what's happening with that clock because it's almost like in the press box they assumed they were going to call timeout. And and you have to keep that running because we haven't seen any issues where they don't stop the I clock. Don't, I don't think he wound the clock because they waved him as being out of bounds. But I guess No, no, they were winding second, first and 10 oh, for the yeah. 42. Marquez rolling, setting up. He's going to take off with the football. All types of running room to the 45 along the left sideline, and he's taken out of bounds at about the 46-yard line. J.J. Marquez. I think he's playing his best game of the season. I agree. Gain of four, 21.9 seconds to go, and Fort Morgan is looking somehow to get on the board. Holy Family's not going to use timeouts now unless they come up with an interception. On second down and six to go, the Mustangs at their own 46-yard line, trailing by a touchdown late in the opening half. Back to throw Marquez, bubble screen to the right, caught by Johnson at the 44, a first down in the middle to the 45, along the right sideline to the 30, with speed to burn it at the 20. Johnson is taken down and out of bounds, so they do stop the clock at about the 16-yard line. The clock's still running and he's out of bounds. 38. What is going on? Yard, yeah, I mean, they got to put a lot of time back on. Yeah, that's, that's that should, should be about, be about eight or nine ten, seconds to 10. go. 8.86. There you go, 38 yards on the connection. Well, maybe it's not, maybe it is the clock. Well, I mean, I there's there's I, no way they could be that sloppy down there. I know beforehand when I was down here, they were having problems trying to get the okay. clock to work, so they may yeah. be having a. Well, a clock I, I, issue. I, I may have been too harsh then. Perhaps. Are they going to attempt now? They do. The Mustangs do have one timeout. That was a very sarcastic, perhaps. First and 10 for the 16, but I did appreciate that, Kevin, because I love to swim in that same pool. Now, do you throw something underneath and set up for a field goal? You have one timeout remaining. 10.86 seconds to go. Naked backfield at the 16-yard line, and there's going to be a false start. Jeez. Against Fort Morgan. Two steps forward, one step back. It'll be at, well... That's exactly what happened there. 
Here's a big play. I mean, 14-14 is going to be tough, but if you can make it 14-10. to If you get about 5 or 10 yards closer, they're probably going to try a field goal. From this vantage point, they won't try a field goal because the other thing you risk with an inexperienced field goal kicker, getting that thing blocked and going the other way for 6, and that would really destroy what the Mustangs have built here in the opening half. From the 21, back to throw, deep over the middle, it's incomplete. Johnson was well covered at the goal line. 6.79 seconds to go. Well, the clock did stop there. You know, they got another shot at the end zone. Yeah, but it might be the final shot. How about Marquez throwing for 157 yards in the opening half? Second down and 15 to go from the 21. Yeah, you can't set up anything underneath. You've either got to go end zone, or well, if you set it up underneath, go down immediately. Yeah. You don't have enough time. On second down, Marquez, deep drop, pressure coming. He's going to have to roll out of it. He's sacked. Now call timeout with a second to go. That's what the Mustangs do. He's sacked at about the 29. And let's see who's down for the Mustangs at the 31. I don't know, he fell on the, did the ball, the ball had come loose, I think, and he fell on the ball, did he not? Yeah, they, yeah, well, but Marquez is not the one who's down. No, no, it was a lineman, I believe, right. that fell on it. I don't know if he fell on it, not the wind out of him, or if he just, or what happened? Yeah, I'm guessing. Well, at this point, just throw it into the end zone with, now it's at zero seconds. you got to put a second on there. I don't know what's happening. It, it's got to be the clock, and Brian just mentioned if they had issues here, no, then it's just a mechanical thing. I mean, it's a gorgeous facility. You would think that everything is top-notch, including the clock, but that's... Uh, well, it's a nice-looking clock, you know. Well, it's, my, it's my son's going to be an electrician. Well, he, not, he'd be able to fix it. I hope. It sounded like when they were doing it, it sounds like it's fed by Wi-Fi, and they had to put up some other type of wire, they uh, said, to get it to work. So, well... Technology. <clears throat> Listen, we don't have... Our signal is at about probably close it's not a hundred percent efficiency based on the numbers but it's it's high efficiency but we can get away with that with a clock especially if you're relying on that Wi-Fi you're talking about not necessarily the same we're at the top of the hour here on Morgan County's B106 KPRB Brush Fort Morgan Oscar Ramirez that number 75 yeah. Yep. yeah oh man and he does not look good he's needing assistance off the field at the 31 yard line well he's walking under his own power but maybe he's just groggy I don't know but let's hope that everything is okay with Oscar Ramirez a key player for the Mustangs offensively and defensively well we know one thing this will be the final play of the opening half unless there's a defensive penalty one second to go holy family is going to call a timeout and that makes complete sense because you want to make sure they have the right defense out there for JJ Lofted they have to tell him on the sideline do not throw anything resembling a line drive you're really not going for a receiver you're going for an area if you throw it into an area with trajectory, you never know what happens. Yeah, let him run under it. Well, I mean, that, Brian, or deflection? Yeah. It's hard to deflect a line drive pass. Just throw it in the area. Forget about, well, I'm looking for this guy or that guy. No. Michael, in fact, Michael Westbrook in Michigan. That was 1994. That was about a 70-yard pass that uh, Cordell Stewart threw. Wasn't that the same season with the five downs in Missouri? No, that was 1990. All right, here we go. Back to throw in the final play for the 31. Lofts it up deep, and it's going to be caught, but upended is Keller. Nope, he, it broke it up. He dropped it as soon as he was hit, and that's the end of the opening half with a score. Holy Family 14, Fort Morgan 7 on B106 and the Eastern Plains Sports Network.
Chop Beltre, Brian Nickel, and Kevin Rohde. Miguel Davila with a short kickoff fielded at the 26-yard line. Holy Family returns at one of the up men to the 41-yard line. 14-7 Holy Family as we begin the third quarter. And uh, Brian, how would you grade that first half? After a rough start. I give him a B. Kevin, you're a teacher. Or were a teacher for a long yeah, time. Yeah. I, I'd say B plus for extra effort. And there's the snap and the handoff to McNaughton. A stiff arm running right across the 40 to the 45 for a gain of four. And a Mustang is down in the backfield. Let's see who that is. And we already had Oscar Ramirez injured late in the opening half. I cannot get a number there. McNaughton had 113 yards rushing in the opening half and that looks like that's, uh, is that Velasquez or Vasquez, one of those two. Yep, Christian Velasquez. Velasquez getting up and he's gonna be limping a little bit. So I wonder if this uh, runner for Holy Family is related to Big Mike Naughton. Those of you who've been around Denver area for a while can be, might remember Big Mike. Second down and six for Holy Family at their own 46-yard line. That's where the history of the game comes in that, that both Kevin and Brian are really adept on. Well, I'm certainly not me. My history goes back, what, a couple of decades maybe. There's the give to McNaughton running to his left and stacked up at the line of scrimmage maybe half a yard. Plenty of penetration there by Noah Aguirre and Colin Duckworth. I told these guys it's Aguirre, not Aguiar. Yeah. Jeez. You say potato. Yeah, but I made it pretty clear. Third down and six to go at the 45. Cooney to throw. McDonald's wide open. Now he's getting pressured, rolling out to his right. He's got room to run. Throws along the sideline. Incomplete. At the 20 yard line, the receiver had a step. And that was, uh, looks like Erickson. It'll be fourth down. And the Holy Family will punt. That's the second time that he's overthrown someone when he's running. I, I think that's kind of something that you have to work on as a quarterback to understand the situation. Okay, if I'm running, Adam, I've got to take a little bit off to not overthrow that ball. Again, watch for any fake here. It's fourth and six. Perfect snap. And a heavy rush by Keller. High, end over end, short. Get away from it if you're a Mustang. It takes a holy family roll inside the 15 and actually backpedals that football to the 15. A punt of 34 yards, and the Mustangs have 85 yards to go to tie the game. As this quarter brought to you by Stubbs Gas and Oil off I-76 and exit 66A in Wiggins. Great stuff at Stubbs Gas and Oil. 10.44 to go third quarter. Holy Family 14, Fort Morgan 7. It's a good way to start off the second half with a three and out for this powerful Holy Family offense. Let's see Fort Morgan. Oh, they're missing a guy. Probably uh, 67 who got hurt. His replacement isn't in. Well, that should be addressed beforehand. You have to address those things beforehand because I could see first and 10 at the 15 yard line. There's a snap back to throw is Marquez. Bubble screen to the right, caught by Johnson across the 15 to the 20. And Johnson tackled at about the 23 for a gain of eight. Yeah, I'm glad to see they're getting the plays, getting the ball in his hands more. Early on, they weren't really getting it to him, so he could showcase his speed. But the last couple, three games, they've been getting it into, getting it into his hands. Yeah, it looks like they're opening up the playbook, and, and or at least going deeper into it um, now that you got a quarterback that's got a little more experience. Second down. And two to go at the 23-yard line. Naked backfield. There's a direct snap to J.J. Marquez running to his left. No, that's Trey Romero with a stiff arm and a first down. His first appearance of the game. And no wonder they ran that play. Romero with a gain of 11. To the 34-yard line. It would a nice... 
change of pace here where they can bring Trey Romero in to do that running for him. It uh, gives them that little extra special there from the quarterback position. First and 10 at the 34 yard line. Here for Trey Romero and the Mustangs. Naked backfield. Aguirre resets to the right. And there's a direct snap. Romero up the middle. And he scoots his way to the 38 for a gain of four. Second down and six as Roman Olsen made the tackle. And Fort Morgan looking good here with nine minutes to go. 9-10 to go in the third quarter trailing. 14-7. Up to the line of scrimmage. Trey Romero still the quarterback. Naked backfield. Second down and six from the 38. Romero stutter steps and he runs right into a Tiger. Nowhere to go there. And then he's driven back. Maybe lost a yard. Going to the ball once too many times there. They need to bust him outside. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Well, they got him back to the line of scrimmage. No one expects him to pass. So... Well, maybe now on a third down, but like on that second down, if they would have done some play action, kind of step in there and then take a step back and throw it, I bet they would have caught someone open deep. On third down, and about seven to go. Back to throw Romero, setting, throwing over the middle. It's tipped and complete. It was tipped by a Mustang receiver because it was there thrown, and there's a late hit. Oh man, Holy Family Tiger, and Ramirez goes down late. Oscar Ramirez back into the game. He might have been roughed up there by a Holy Family defender who's going to be taken out of the game. This will be a personal foul. Holy Family first down for Fort Morgan. I don't know what he was so mad about. He and Oscar Ramirez were there battling, and he didn't like something that happened, but it cost his team a chance to get the ball back. And the Holy Family coaches aren't arguing, so they must have saw the same thing. And, you know, they pulled 75 out and let him cool off a little bit. Yeah, Matthew Sakaris, first and 10 for the Mustangs at the 47. 8.04 to go, third quarter. Holy Family leads 14-7. to There's the jet sweep. There is Giannis along the left side with a stiff arm. Check that. Let's see if that's Bosworth instead. No, that's Charlie Langford. I didn't see the five there. It's almost like the number disappeared. It's a gain of 11. Charlie Langford getting up limping, but that's his best carry of the game. That's the third time he's been called on the jet sweep. First and 10 for the Mustangs at the 36. And what are you thinking of this game so far? I'm impressed. I'm really pleased with what's happening here with the Mustangs tonight. And on a short, as Coach Davies was saying, it was kind of a short week. They didn't get their film until Saturday night. So you didn't have a lot of time to get things set up on first and 10 from the 36 yard line Romero runs to his right to the 35 a flag is down Romero's tackled at the 30 and what did we talk about at the beginning of the game crucial mistakes and that's one of them right there because that's coming back that's going to be a first and 20 or maybe a little bit more because that hold was in the backfield and it was away from the play it wouldn't have had any impact on the play yeah, I don't know if it freed up Romero at all. But you're right, it was thrown after Romero crossed that point where the flag was thrown. So you never know, but it is a first and 21. They're at the 47, 7.23 to go. And the opening four and a half minutes here of the third quarter. Holy Family 14, Fort Morgan 7. They were separated by nine yards of offense at halftime, and Fort Morgan now is outgained him. Back to throw Marquez. Pressure coming deep the right side. Caught inside the 34 to the 33. Chase Redding with a reception, a gain of 14, and J.J. Marquez hitting his marks beautifully. Yeah, it's like Holy Family's trying to stop the the pass by dropping more people back, which is putting less pressure on the quarterback. I think it's having the opposite effect. Yeah, JJ's looking ni- good tonight. He's got a nice. He throws a nice ball. Second down and seven to go. I mean, is it's amazing. 
how much he's improved here over the season at the 33 yard line Marquez hands it off to Keller running to his right he's going to be driven back and down he might have lost a yard running behind his right tackle a loss of one for Keller Braden Bach is a guy who made the hit before well it'll be a third and long but not a third and super long you're looking third and about eight for the 34 yard line of Holy Family 553 to go third quarter Holy Family now I'm gonna say clinging to a 14 to 7 lead because this looked like this was gonna be a four or five touchdown game after just two drives and the Fort Morgan defense has responded and the offense has moved the ball down the field but this was a drive that started deep back in their own territory on third and eight Langford in motion play action Marquez rolling to his left backside pressure has got to get rid of it does incomplete that was underthrown and you know what that's a good pass you don't want that thing thrown towards a target because Johnson was blanketed by the defender along the sideline the only thing he could have done there was throwing an interception mm -hmm. yeah that was that was a good uh, decision on his part to not try and force that in and I don't know if he felt that guy coming up behind him or you know he, he got rid of the ball but I'm not sure he felt that defender on his back I thought he thought that he thought he could squeeze it in there fourth down and eight to go at the 34 yard line pistol formation Marquez looking to throw out to his left and it's deflected incomplete it went through Langford's hands at the 33 whether he would have had a first down he would have had to make a move because that was not a guaranteed first down but quite frankly I I think that was an excellent play design yeah I don't know there was a couple three defenders right close so it would have been it would have been close yeah. All right. I mean give you it know a what? try so yeah let's just say it Brian hated the play no I'm <laughs> <laughs> no no but you're right I mean it was not an automatic first down from the 34 Holy Family Cooney is getting pressured flushed out to his right throws along the sideline caught by McNaughton makes a move to the 45 a flag is down McNaughton's gonna go the distance but that's not gonna count it's gonna come all the way back it would have been 66 yards but there's a flag down at the 39 and I think there was a block in the back that freed McNaughton Yep, and yep. you can take away the six points. That's a huge call in this game, but it's the right call. Yep. Yeah, it was clearly in the back. Um, the defender was coming up to uh, make the play, and an uh, offensive player from behind, farther downfield, came up and made the block. So how can you block someone not in the back when you're both going the same direction? Yeah. That's what it is, a block in the back. Somebody you just yelled terrible. No. What's terrible is that comment because it was clear from here that freedom up. It'll be a first down and 15 to go at the 29 yard line. Holy Family 14, Fort Morgan 7. We have 5.06 to go in the third quarter. Two receivers out to the left, two to the right. One setback. Awaiting the snap. There it is. The handoff on the left side. That's a fresh running back across the 35, getting a block. And there's a flag down. That might be a face mask against Fort Morgan to the 47-yard line unless it's a late hold. Hold. That was Dominic Gabriel with a gain of 18. Now, if it's a hold, they'll give him some positive yardage because it was way down the field. Yep, you're right. But they're going to mark it off from the 40. So, essentially, it's an 11-yard gain. Well, 12-yard gain back to the 31. What did they just say? I didn't catch that. I hope that's nothing directed towards the referees. If not, you you got to get an AD involved. On first down and 13 at the 31. That's coming from the student section as well. Two receivers put out each side from the shotgun formation. Cooney back to throw. Plenty of protection. Now he steps up in the pocket and he goes down. He picks up a couple of yards. But the Mustangs kept him in the middle to bring him down. And the first hit was made by Christian Velasquez. It's a gain of two. Third carry for Cooney for 34 yards. Second down and 12 yards to go. Did Holy Family expect Fort Morgan to be this competitive? No, I think they've overlooked them. Yep. 
on second and 12. Again, Cooney to throw. The slants is going to be caught at the 40-yard line, and that'll be a first down to the 44. That's Samaras with a reception. That's his third of the game. They got exactly what he needed. That's the first completion of the second half for Cooney. Quick snap. There's the handoff to McNaughton. Oh, what do we have here? Well, that was a called. player was coming oh. off the field. Yeah, one was coming off and one was going on. Holy Family looks like they're not in sync at all. I mean, I know that's an obvious statement, but a player coming off the field and you try to quick snap it, you got to know where everybody else is. Yeah. All right, 3.50 to go in the third quarter. Holy Family, 14, Fort Morgan, 7. The ball's at the 45-yard line after the pickup of 12. And now... Head coach Ty Davies wants to know what that's all about because I think he was I think it was an injury is what the deal was. I think he was coming off hurt. Yeah, he was. Yeah, because he, he was frustrated taking off his helmet with Samaris. And now let's see, they've asked for the clock to be wound, and guess what? Nothing is happening. It's like they're not even watching the guy. There's the handoff to McNaughton running to his left. Oh. And then somehow he stays on his feet and he kind of worms his way across the 50 to the 47 for a gain of eight. It's almost like he was in the Marines trying to get under wire yeah. and staying off of his knees. He's off the field now, second down and two for the 47 yard line of Fort Morgan. 3.18 to go in the third quarter. Holy Family 14, Fort Morgan seven. Two receivers split out each side. There's the snap to Cooney, there's the handoff and close to a first down and maybe getting it yeah now spun down but that's a late late whistle that should have been blown much earlier dominic gabriel the ball carrier second carry he's got 13 yards first and 10 at the 45. a touchdown here would be huge yeah. with a 14 to 7 lead two receivers to the left two to the right gabriel's in the backfield shotgun formation Cooney, two-step drop, pass out to his right, is caught underneath, and then the ball is loose, it's fumbled, and, yeah, I thought he was down at the 39, complete to Cole Kuzak, his first reception. It just seems like uh, a lot of things are kind of off, like the ball was right in front of the official, he didn't blow his whistle that we could tell. Way to tell the offensive people when got turkey to do And there's a big gain to Gabriel on the handoff up the middle, across the 15, back to the inside of the 10. And he's down to the eight yard line. Oh man, that's the big play that Holy Family needed, a gain of 31 for Dominic Gabriel. And it's first and goal, looking to build upon that seven point lead inside of two minutes to go. At the eight yard line in the third quarter. Again, same formation with a running back to the right of the quarterback and Gabriel's been a nice addition here for Holy Family during this drive. He uh, no, it's a quarterback keeper on and scoring easily off the fake running to his left from eight yards out is Ryland Cooney. He broke a tackle at the five on that modified bootleg, basically an option. And it's 20 to seven Holy Family. Cooney has a touchdown pass, now a touchdown run. Yeah, he just busted it outside on the after the uh, fake handoff. And the Mustangs couldn't bring him down. And the extra point by Nolan is up and good. We have a minute 38 to go in the third quarter from Broomfield. Holy Family is back up to a two touchdown advantage. Holy Family 21, Fort Morgan 7 on B106 and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. 69-yard drive, an eight-yard touchdown run by Ryland Cooney off an excellent fake. Mustangs were trying to tackle Gabriel, and then Cooney broke a tackle there at about the five-yard line and scooted into the end zone. And now the Tigers to kick it off the Mustangs need to counter here late in the third quarter. This is a high end over end kick fielded at the 11 to the 15-yard line, running right to the 20 along the right sideline and out of bounds. On the return. And is that Charlie Langford again? A return of over 20 yards. Not bad field position. 
Kevin, I know the grade was B, B plus in that range, but I still think it's in that range, even though you give up that touchdown. Well, I think looking at the the, the team that they're competing against, for them to come out here and uh, play with them, they're down two scores, and we'll see how they do on this drive. But yeah, you know, the only reason they don't have an A for me is because of the penalties. You know, they've had too many penalties and shot themselves in the foot. Marquez from the pistol, handoff on the left side, and back towards the middle is Keller. A flag is down, and here goes another penalty flag, as Kevin just talked about, a gain of six to the 41. There must have been a hold out on this corner for this guy, to, for this side judge to throw it. So what is, is that a symbol of fatigue? A lot of times when you hold, you, you've, you've kind of worn yourself down a little bit, it feels. Yeah, you get a little lazy. Uh, you, know, you, you don't have the good proper footwork and get yourself in position and and then you got to reach out and grab them and that's what they're looking for well this is going to take them back to the 27 yard line it'll be first and 18 for the mustangs you have a 20 yard touchdown pass from ryland cooney to chase mcnaughton mcnaughton scored from 71 yards out that was on the opening quarter mustangs got a 17 yard pass from marquez to keller for a touchdown and then it took two quarters for Holy Family to counter on the eight-yard run by Cooney. First and 20 for the Mustangs at their own 27-yard line, approaching one minute to go in quarter number three. Marquez, play action, looks to throw. The slant is going to be caught underneath, or was it dropped? I think they're signaling incomplete. A diving attempt by Chase riding at the 37. He thought he had it, but it's clear that it, the ball hit the turf. Well, he's not clear about it. Redding thinks he caught it. Well, I, I, judging by his body language. Incomplete pass. He was trying to sell it anyway, but everybody right. else said it was an incomplete pass. So. Marquez, he might throw for 200 yards in this game. He's probably a couple of more completions. On second down and 20 to go from the 27. They might establish the running game here. He just can't. Oh, it's a naked backfield. Perhaps a jet sweep? We'll see. Trips to the left. Marquez, plenty of protection. Sets deep over the middle. That's incomplete. He overthrew Langford by five yards. But the defender was right there in Grunderson. That has no chance of being complete. And, Brian, now we go back to the theory that we talked about early in the season. You're going for the home run when you probably don't need to. Yeah, you just, it's you know I know it's third and long, but... Uh... It would have been second and long at that point. You know, pick up eight or nine yards, ten yards, and then go third and ten from there. So well, now they've thrown four consecutive incompletions. And it's third down and 20 to go for the 27. 21 to 7, Holy Family. 51 seconds to go. In the third, Langford in motion to the right. Marquez looking to throw. Screen to Keller at the 25. To the middle, to the 30. He gets a block to the 40. Along the right sideline to the 50. Keller with a first down. And he follows a blocker out of bounds at the 47 what another well-designed play and a gain of 26 yards and a first down for the Fort Morgan Mustangs they've done it again on a screen pass Kevin on third down yeah that was that was really nice it's nice for them to incorporate that screen into it you know when you guys are talking about the, the thrown long it's almost like we shifted into desperation and with the whole third to fourth quarter ahead of us and within two scores, I don't think it's desperation time. Well, I mean, you have over 300 yards of offense. They can move the ball. On first and 10 for the 46, naked backfield. Quarterback draw for Marquez to the 40. Marquez with a first down to the 33. 13 yards for freshman J.J. Marquez. He's not been too bad on the ground either. He's got 26 yards on five carries. And now Johnson will realign himself and line up as the receiver to the outside left with Langford. Let's see if the Mustangs get off one final play in the third quarter. We have 18 seconds to go. On first down and 10 from the 33. Pistol formation. There's the snap. Marquez hands it off to Keller, running to his right to the 30. Grabbed around the jersey or by the jersey at the 26 gain of seven oscar ramirez gets up slowly that's the end of the third quarter after the seven yard gain from david keller it's holy family 21 for morgan seven on b106 and the eastern plain sports network 
John Beltran with Brian Nickel and Kevin Rohde. The Mustangs trail 21 to 7 as we head to the fourth quarter, but knocking on the door, second down, and a yard and a half to go for the Mustangs at the 25 of Holy Family. Naked backfield. This is Trey Romero. Who awaits a snap, and we know he's a major threat with his legs. Big, strong, sophomore quarterback. J.J. Marquez has done a tremendous job, and Mar Romero as well with the limited plays he's had. Romero looks to throw, sets, still setting, deep over the middle. The pass is going to be intercepted at the two-yard line and tackled by Charlie Langford. There's a late flag, and it was picked off by Joseph Eiton. Yeah, not a good pass, and we've seen Romero two weeks in a row make some tough decisions that really didn't work out in his favor. He had all types of time uh, yeah. that he tried to force it. Well, you can't squeeze it between two defenders that both are going to come and get to the ball. The receiver really should have come back for the ball, I think, in that case. Yeah, but even there, I, you know, I don't know what that would have produced. You're right, Kevin. He probably should have, but Johnson's had a huge night. Yeah. Johnson's caught six balls for 91 yards. I don't know what he could have done. But not a good decision there by Romero. As it was picked off at the one-yard line and with a personal foul against Fort Morgan. It's now at the 23 for Holy Family. Eight seconds into the fourth quarter, leading 21-7. to seven. The lone setback is McNaughton. Let's see the Mustang defense can make a play. And the snap is wide to the left of the quarterback. And now Cooney's going to have to throw the ball or no he's going to take off with the ball and tackle from behind a busted play but he made uh, some valuable yardage out of it as a Mustang gets up slowly and he gets to the 30 yard line that was a mess and somehow well now they're going to put it at the 29 a gain of 6 for Ryland Cooney off an Aaron snap second down and 4 he's a running threat he's got the 8 yard touchdown run the only score in the second half by either team on second down, Cooney, screen pass out to the left, caught by McNaughton, breaks out of two tackles, but not a third. It's going to be a loss to the 25-yard line, a gain of four, a uh, negative gain, I should say. Gain of four for the Mustangs. Duckworth in on the play, loss of four. Now it'll be third down and eight yards to go. Two receivers split out each side from the 25. Cooney has the football, three-step drop, sets, throws deep over the middle, incomplete. Man, that ball needed air. He threw a line drive to McNaughton, well covered by David Keller at the 43. That had no chance of being complete. And Holy Family has to punt, and what a job by the Mustang defense. Yeah, they've uh, they've come to play tonight, that's for sure. They've, I'm impressed both sides of the ball. Yeah, I mean, when you think about Holy Family's quarterback is the leading uh, passer in 3A. He had 91 yards passing in the first half, Kevin, yeah. 14 in the second yeah. half. Yeah, we've shut him down. Uh, that punt is a gorgeous punt. Line drive. That's going to take a huge roll inside the 25. Now it'll die at about the 16, still rolling at the 16-yard line. And that punt just went for 59 yards. That changes field position altogether. I think Fort Morgan was anticipating starting it yeah. around the 35. Yeah, that's where they had their re returner at, and it went well over his head. Well, nothing wrong with putting together a long drive. The way I see it, if Fort Morgan doesn't rally in this game, it's a successful night. I mean, yeah, you had some mistakes, but Kevin just mentioned you've held down one of the top passing quarterbacks in all of 3A. Yeah, they've, they've got a lot to, they've worked on a lot and have improved it a great deal. First and 10 for the 17 yard line, pistol formation, perfect snap. Marquez hands it off and a nice hole and spinning out of a tackle across the 20 to the 25 and the 26 is David Keller. I'm gonna say it again, this guy runs with reckless abandon because he should have been tackled for a gain of two instead he picked up nine. Yeah, like Coach said in the pregame, uh, that kid's got a lot of heart, and he, he plays plays with it. Uh, and he, he just keeps coming after it. How about 15 carries for 69 yards? That's not bad at all after a rough start to this game. 
Second down and one from the 25-yard line. Marquez hands it off up the middle, and that's Keller again. But he's getting back to the line of scrimmage. Oh, there! I think that might be a late hit. There's a late flag. They flung Keller around like a rag doll. I hope that's not on Fort Morgan on the offensive line, especially since the play was over. Yeah. But I heard the whistle blow, and then he got flung around, and that's going to be a face mask personal foul against Holy Family. It'll be at around the 40-yard line, and a first down for Fort Morgan. 9.29 to go, fourth quarter. Holy yeah. Family leads 21-7. I think the challenge for Holy Family going forward is you got this game, and then you get two you know, teams that have hardly any wins, and then you got to go in the playoffs. You know, how are you going to prepare for the playoffs when you don't have any strong competition to, down the stretch? Naked backfield. That's encroachment, is it not? Yep. Against Holy Family, the Mustangs will have it at the 46-yard line. I mean, keep in mind, they're doing this with a freshman quarterback. Yeah. And J.J., I mean, I know the family well. He's a very, very intelligent kid, very intelligent. So this is no surprise that he's made this much progress. And I know it's just not Marquez. It's the entire team. But if your quarterback isn't making progress, that can kind of deflate the rest of the team's progress. Trips to the right on first and five for the 46. Marquez out to the right. And it's incomplete. Well, Redding came back for the football, and I don't know if it went through his hands or over his hands, second down. Yeah, I couldn't tell either. He was open. He went up for it. Maybe it was just overthrown. But a lot of improvement that we've seen from this Fort Morgan offense from the start of the season. Oh, About yeah. 22 passes thrown by... Marquez again he's thrown for 196 yards second down and 10 for the 46 yard line just over nine minutes to go in the game JJ with a quarterback draw to the 50 yard line and then he dives to about the 49 on that second and five not second and ten second and five a gain of six and a first down for the Mustangs Marquez has now run for 30 yards on six carries yeah, I, I think you just look at this, and this certainly isn't what I was expecting coming. I mean, you always come into a game open-minded, thinking you, you hope the team will play well. But Marquez rolling out to his right, still rolling. He's got the sideline he can utilize. He runs to the 45, and he scoots out of bounds to the 42. And you know what was impressive about that play? First of all, J.J.'s got to run there, because if not, you throw the ball, you probably have an ineligible man downfield. Second of all, there was no penalty there because the more a quarterback gets extended, sometimes you might just try to throw a block and you end up grabbing jersey, and yet that offensive line was very disciplined there, and Marquez gains five yards, and it's second and five again. And he had plenty of time rolled out to the right. With good well, defense by the uh, Tigers. Let's see what Coach Davies is talking about with three officials with a football at the 43 yard line we will be in Denver a week from Saturday when the Mustangs take on Northfield you imagine if they didn't have that first quarter we could be looking at a team going for a victory and a 3-0 and league start right you beat Northfield then you'd have played Lutheran for the league title yeah right but I mean to win this game is going to take a mini miracle there's plenty of time, but you've only scored seven points, even though Fort Morgan has racked up well over 300 yards of offense. And again, not sure what the discussion is about with head coach Ty Davies and three officials near the Fort Morgan sideline. Yeah, I have no idea. I think they're going to have to converse now with the Holy Family coaches. They're coming across the way. But it, I have no guess, gentlemen, and I i don't know if either one of you have one. I, I, well, what's that signal there? They're going to turn off the clock, I think. Well, the clock has been inconsistent the whole time. It said 8 minutes and 40 seconds to go. Now it's at 20 minutes. Now back to 8.40. I don't know. Are they going to keep it on the field? Yeah, I think the back judge is... I thought they kept it on the field anyway. Mm -hmm. They did, but who knows? 
Second down and five to go at the Holy Family 43 for the Mustangs. Down by two touchdowns. Two receivers put each side. Marquez pass is caught underneath and a first down to Kayshawn Johnson at the 34. A gain of nine. And for Johnson, that is reception number seven. And Marquez is at 203 yards through the air. Up to the line of scrimmage at the 36. Marquez with a quarterback keeper to his left of the 30. JJ with a first down. He spun down at the 23. How about this for a gain of 11? And they're coming back. And, you know, they've been really good at getting down to the red zone, but then they end up making some mistakes. So let's hope they can put this all together and put the fear into Holy Family. First and 10 at the 24 yard line. Time out, Holy Family. Well, let's take it with them. We have 8.05 to go in the game. The Mustangs are knocking on the door. It's Holy Family 21, Fort Morgan 7 on B106, B106.com, and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. At the 23 yard line. First and 10 for the Mustangs in Holy Family territory. Back to throw is Marquez looking, and that slant is going to be broken up at the 16 yard line. Didn't look like he got a, a lot of mustard on that one. Yeah, they had a corner blitz or someone coming in from the, the side there. Fort Morgan's offensive line has really improved this this game you know, compared to how he was getting hit as he was thrown before. They're doing a great job right now. Second down and 10 at the 23. Attention, folks, just so yeah, the clock is going to be run for the field. About eight minutes to go. Jet sweep for Langford to the middle to the 15-yard line. Langford is spun down and close to a first down at the 13. That is Charlie Langford with another effective run. And it's first down for the Mustangs at the 13 yard line. Knocking on the door are the Mustangs. Can they make this a seven point game? Naked backfield. Marquez with a quarterback draw is going to be taken down for a loss. Back at the 15 yard line, it's a loss of two. Second down and 12 to go at the 15 yard line. Again, we can only estimate there's probably about seven minutes to go in the game. Holy Family with a 21 to 7 lead. Two receivers put out each side. Marquez naked backfield looks to throw the pressure out to his right. Incomplete. A diving attempt at the 14 15 yard line there by number 15. That is Charlie Langford. But there was pressure, Kevin, coming up the middle. Yeah, and he kind of locked on Langford. Uh, he missed Johnson across the middle wide open. So he's getting his little bit of happy feet again and, and throwing and locking on and then throwing too quickly. Well, and it's odd that he wouldn't throw to Johnson there even though Langford was kind of open but Johnson has seven receptions tonight for nearly 100 yards third down and about 12 to go for the 15 yard line Marquez looks to throw pressure coming up the middle he sacked oh man he tried to get out of that pocket a little bit too late and Anderson Osborne throws him down at the 24 and now you're looking at a fourth down at 21 and at this point you don't want to set up that little bubble screen. I mean, just, again, throw it up in the end zone, almost like it's a Hail Mary. Yeah. And, again, the clock being kept on the field, we're guessing it at about six minutes. At about six, six and a half minutes. Because they've had too many malfunctions with the scoreboard. So, fourth down. And officially 20 to go from the 23. Mark has to throw deep over the middle. And... It's incomplete. Oh, Langford went up for the football at the three-yard line. It was knocked down by Grunderson at the last second. That was not a bad throw at all, but the coverage was right there. Yep. Yep. And now J.J., even though he's thrown for over 200 yards, they're starting to defend him very well. 
as that is for the last five passes that have gone incomplete. Holy Family more than likely now will keep the ball on the ground at their own 23 yard line. On first and 10 for the 23, high snap handoff to McNaughton running to his right. He's got a seam along the right sideline to the 35. He breaks out of a tackle at the 50. Another flag is down. McNaughton back to the 30. McNaughton is taken down by the ankles of the 27. That's a gain of 50, but guess what? Again, it's coming back. Although I about this penalty here. It's going to be a sideline warning. Is that what it is? Yeah, he, the ref was run along and ran into someone. Oh. I thought it was a block. Okay. Well, that's not coming back. 50 yards for McNaughton. Man, they, I, they, I thought they threw it in an area and it was a violation along the offensive line, but forget about that. McNaughton now with 13 carries for 171 yards. That's only his third carry of the, third of the second half. First and 10 at the 27. And now we have a false start against Holy Family. And that'll set up a first and 15. You know, if this game ends 28-7, to it's going to look a lot worse when it really wasn't. Right. And it's odd because Fort Morgan has looked really solid offensively. And they're going to score seven points, and that's about it. On first and 15 from the 32, perfect snap. And Cooney will keep it himself, running to his left. Johnson is out there along the sideline and ushers him out of bounds. A gain of four to the 28. Second down and 11. Well, like Kevin said earlier that, you know, they've done real well out in the middle of the field, but they get down into the red zone and they just can't punch it in. It's just something tonight that's just not working in the red zone. Just past the top of the hour, this is Morgan County's B106 KPRB, Brushfort Morgan McNaughton again, snaps out of a tackle, snaps out of a second one, he, behind a blocker to the 15, McNaughton to the 10, to the 5, touchdown, he made a bunch of moves there, the score from 28 yards out, and there's a late flag again, but that's going to be a touchdown anyway, McNaughton with a second rushing touchdown of the game, his third overall, and Holy Family leads Fort Morgan 27 to 7. I think they're going to get him for unnecessary uh, celebration, maybe. 198 yards on 14 carries for Chase McNaughton. And Fort Morgan, which was in this game for most of the way, is now down by three touchdowns. Extra point is coming up. We're guessing there's about, how we say, about four and a half minutes to go in the game. The extra point to be attempted by Will Nolan. And the flag, the penalty would be assessed, of course, on the ensuing kickoff. Nolan has the snap. It's into the hands of the holder, and the kick is good. With a score, Holy Family 28, Fort Morgan 7 on B106 and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. 27-yard touchdown run by Chase McNaughton. Holy Family leads Fort Morgan and Broomfield 28-7. Really what's killed the Mustangs tonight is the big play. Yeah. McNaughton with a 71-yarder, a 50-yarder, a 27-yarder. That's what's gotten him defensively. It's not like Holy Family has matriculated the ball down the field on that Fort Morgan defense. Yeah, I think you're right. It, it is the big play, and you, know, you got to give credit to McNaughton. He, he gets hit, and he kind of bounces, and he kind of keeps his balance and finds a way and, and yeah, it's fun to watch him run I'd, I'd like to come watch him play you know down the road in the playoffs and holy family off that unsportsmanlike kicks off in the 25 Keller though fields it at the 12 running straight to the 20 yard line off to his right to the 25 a seam along the right sideline to the 40 and Keller is going to be pushed out of bounds oh that's going to be a late push oh man at the 47 yeah, I uh, was that not a late push out of bounds? I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I think the Holy Family coaches want some sort of penalty. I well, think. I think what they thought, and I thought I saw it too, was he right. went for a fair catch. Oh, you're right. Yeah, you're right. That's what they're signaling. Why would he call for a fair I, catch? I don't know. I don't know if he was just doing it to try to gain his balance, because I, I he wouldn't he wouldn't be calling it 
He yeah. Would, uh, he wouldn't be calling it, but that's what it looked like. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess if that ca- counts, uh, gives Fort Morgan the game, then Holy Family can complain about it. At the 47, handoff to Keller, and he's nailed after a gain of a yard at the 48-yard line. Uh, things are getting chippy out there. They are. Yeah, and Holy Family is the team that needs to be careful because they, they've they got more to lose than Fort Morgan. If right, without a doubt. If something happens. Not that you want anything to happen. Second down and nine for the 48-yard line. Holy Family leads Fort Morgan 28-7. Back to throw Marquez. Plenty of protection. Pocket collapses. Flush to his right. And he's going to have to throw it along the sideline out of bounds. See, that's the play a senior would make. Yeah. Throw it away. Nice decision there by J.J. Marquez, third and nine. Nothing there. Don't take a sack. Right, or throw an interception. Right, exactly. Maturing before our eyes. Yeah. Well, why are they marking the football there? Bud, the line of scrimmage is at the 48. What is this official doing? Yeah. There we go. I'm a little bit hard on the officials tonight. And, I mean, they're doing a good job, I think. Third down and nine at the 48. From the pistol, now it's a naked backfield. Keller is one of the two receivers to the right. Marquez to throw out to his left, caught by Johnson. He is walloped at the line of scrimmage. It's his eighth reception for no gain. And he was almost better off not even making that catch. Poor Johnson. He took a major shot along the rib cage. He is still down. Mustangs more than likely will punt here on a fourth and nine. Marquez also took a hard hit, and he's gimping around a little bit. I don't think, you know, at this point, it's going to hurt whether you go for it on this one or, or punt. You might as well try and go for it, see what happens. Yeah, he's okay. Got the wind knocked out of him. So it's fourth down and nine to go for the Mustangs. Trailing 28 to seven. And again, the time clock is being kept on the field. Rudy's Tires is nine is the magic number. Nine locations across Northeast Colorado and Nebraska means there's always a location close by. Visit rudystires.com. Fourth down and nine for the Mustangs at their own 48 yard line. We're surmising about three minutes left in this game. It was 14 to seven at halftime and Holy Family has scored the only two touchdowns here in the second half. An eight yard run by Ryland Cooney and Chase McNaughton from 27 yards. Kevin Rohde has called it. They're gonna go for it here. On fourth and nine from the 48. Back to throw. Getting hit as he throws is Marquez. The pass is gonna be broken up at the 37 yard line. That will be a roughing the passer, I believe. I think they went high towards the helmet. That's going to extend the drive. But it was kind of, a, he threw that flag really late, like after a couple seconds. So it's kind of hard for me to see. But Well, it is roughing the passer. You had the call, John. Well, the thing is, he went high. Right. I mean, all he had to do was barrel into his waist or his rib cage, like they did on the Johnson reception. And uh, see, you don't want to get dirty. I no. mean, that's bordering on dirty. Right. When you go high like that. I mean, at any level. And Kevin, you hit the nail on the head. Holy Family's got a lot more to lose in Fort Morgan. First and 10 for the Mustangs at the 37-yard line. Again, we have no idea how much time is left in the game because the clock is not operational. But about three minutes to go. Marquez with a deep drop. Throws a screen underneath. It's caught at the 40-yard line by Keller. And Keller is taken down inside the 35 to the 33. It's a gain of four. (laughs) 207 yards passing for Marquez. Unofficially has 27 pass attempts in this game. At the 34 yard line on second down and seven. Keller has a lone touchdown reception from 17 yards. Quarterback draw. Marquez to the 30. Left sideline to the 20. Marquez to the 10. Marquez is going to be tackled along the sideline out of bounds. But a big gain for Marquez inside the five. 
and he's down to the two. It's a gain of 25. Yeah, there's no quit in the Fort Morgan Mustangs tonight. How about 71 yards on the ground for Marquez and 203 through the air. Handoff, Keller. Left side. Oh, he's right at the goal line. Touchdown. Touchdown, David Keller. Two yards out. His second touchdown of the game. Yeah, that was just power off left, and uh, he just got in barely, and it's going to cut the score down to 28-14. If the extra point is made by Miguel Davila, now we have a late flag. What's going on? I mean, these some of these players got to they've got to really start behaving out there. There's too many flags thrown for unsportsmanlike. And if that's against Fort Morgan, they're going to be kicking off deep in their own territory. But I don't know. I can't assume anything right now. It was thrown towards the line of scrimmage, which really could be against either team. But, I mean, this is not the way you want to play football. And now Davila to attempt the extra point, unsportsmanlike, against Holy Family. Well, you know what? When I say this, Fort Morgan is the one that's playing with uh, a sportsman-like team. Yeah. They're not committing these penalties. It's yeah. only family running their mouth down there. We saw that in the sport of baseball a couple of years ago when the Mustangs did not have a positive experience, and the kick is blocked. It is blocked. So it stays at 28-13 to 13 off Keller's second touchdown of the game. And now the kickoff should be for the 45-yard line with 2.23 to go in the game. Well, how about an onside? Maybe they won't, but why not? Well, you haven't had one all season, so you, know, you, you practice it every week. You might as well go for it. Well, no, they did try an onside. Uh, you weren't with us at Frederick. Oh. They uh -huh. tried an onside trailing 35-14, to 14, and it was recovered by Frederick, but that's the only one they've had. It's right. not like they've done a lot of that. Yeah. So we'll see. And it's a very similar field, Brian. That AstroTurf. Let me get Brian back on because I thought we were going to lose Brian here. And <laughs> so did I. Yeah. <laughs> Brian well, is back. It's just a, uh, you know, a one frog thing, in the throat situation. Yeah. If they kick it long, they're not going to win because Holy Family's only got two minutes. They're going to run it out. So you might as well go for the onside yeah, you have to well you yeah. and you've got a 15 yard head start because you're at the 45 Brian? Right. yep yeah i agree it's <coughs> excuse me but yeah this is the time to do it i mean that's the only way you're going to try and get back get another touchdown here is you got water you need uh oh i've got yeah I'm just okay all right throat. all right now it'll be miguel davila onside with a left foot and that one takes a huge bounce, but it's fielded by Holy Family. And this could go for six at the 30-yard line, down to the 20, along the sideline. 65 yards for a touchdown. That is Connor Henkel. Oh, man. It took a high hop, but a perfect bounce. Not a high enough hop. And the Mustangs were not there to make the play. It's 34-13, to 13, Holy Family. That's too bad. Yeah, I've seen that before. It happened you know, not here in high school, but you see right. it sometimes in pros and staff where it goes right to that guy and everybody's blocked. And Here's a weird open. rule. If you recover the onside kick, you can't advance it. Right. If you're the kicking team. But if you feel the onside kick, well, and that makes sense because you're the receiving team. Yeah. Right. So it, Crazy. I, yeah. Anyway, here comes the extra point to be attempted by Will Nolan. He is four out of four so far. Again, this final score is going to make it look like Holy Family took it to Fort Morgan when this was a very competitive game for a good three-plus quarters. Awaiting the snap. The kick is up, and that is good. Two minutes to go from Broomfield. It's Holy Family 35, Fort Morgan 13 on B106 and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. David Keller's two-yard touchdown run is countered by a 65-yard kickoff returned by Connor Henkel. Holy Family now leads 35-13. to 13. Just over two minutes to go. There's a deep kickoff. It's into the end zone, and 
Johnson is back out there with Langford. Number 56, and I think at this point, you've run enough plays. Keep this ball on the ground. Try to get nobody hurt. I mean, I think you've proven now your offense has been successful. Yeah. You know, they had a critical turnover with an interception thrown by Trey Romero. And until that point, Trey had very few plays in the game, but he had played well. And he had all types of time, but I think he had too much time and then tried to force it in. And right there, that was a momentum turner. Yeah, that was. Well, several times they had the ball down and could have gotten back in the game and for whatever reason couldn't get it in the end zone. We'll keep it right here once this game is over just to get to the Mustang Post Game Show, which is brought to you by Advanced Agri Solutions. First and 10 for Fort Morgan to the 20. Marquez going to throw. No, this will be a quarterback keeper running to his left. Back towards the middle. He has popped hard. Man, it looked like his neck was snapped back at the 25-yard line. Got to be careful again. You don't want to get anybody hurt in a game that has already been decided. 10 carries for 67. Make it 76 yards for Marquez. Yeah, I mean, just run two more plays and get out of here. Mm -hmm. You know, you played, I think they played for a, a loss here that'll be by 22 points. They played one heck of a game. Yeah, it's a lot closer than, than the score. And I'm frankly, I'm a little surprised at how, you know, prideful Holy Family is in, in some of the stuff that they did. Marquez I mean, rolling out to his right, now to his left. He gets a block for the backside. He's still got room, throws in the run, passes incomplete at the 42. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure, you know, yeah. why Fort Morgan. I mean, they're going to make the score look even worse, just continuing to run the off. Again, I don't, I, I, I don't see the why. Yeah, there's no. The game is over. You know, just run the ball. It's not giving up for crying out loud. No. You, I mean, you've had several drives already. Saving your players. Trips to the right. Yeah, I don't. Third and five. Marquez back to throw. Throws a screen out to the right. Caught by Aguirre. Aguirre's got a first down. I like that play call, which they've called a couple of times to Keller. It's a gain of six. On the catch, number 41. And again, I will stress that. That is not quitting. If Fort Morgan ran the ball to end this game because they have already proven themselves. First and 10 at the 31 yard line. We're about a minute to go in the game. Now, now you can just run it one more time, but they're still set up in a passing formation with a naked backfield. And there, is that encroachment? No, no it's a no. Redding false start. Moved. Redding moved. Yep. Yeah. It'll be first and 15 at the 26. And they're winding that clock, so we got to be down inside of 45 seconds. But they're going to go either, this is either going to be a quarterback keeper or J.J. is going to get rid of it. On first and 15, Marquez rolls to his left. He's thrown almost 30 passes in this game. Looks, takes off with a football along the left sideline, and he barrels into a Holy Family Tiger out of bounds, taking a lot of punishment for a gain of seven. Yeah, that was a huge hit. Yeah, that's number six has had several big hits on the sideline. Well, yeah, he's... Hey, you the know gamer. what? I mean, we're just calling the game here, but I, uh, again, I am surprised they're doing this because you, you health has been an issue this season. Right. We heard Coach Davey say he thought David Keller was going to be gone after game one. I mean, if we have about four or five minutes to go, maybe three and a half, but we're inside of probably 30 seconds to go on a second down and eight from the 33. Keller again looking to throw. Plenty of protection. Looking along the left sideline, he throws. It's picked off. Johnson makes the tackle. That'll be the second interception of the game as Neely picks it off. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know. Understand their play calling, but that's why I'm not down there. So well, I don't. Yeah, I mean, I get it, but again, I will say this: it's not quitting. No. That is not quitting. Right. And now Holy Family might be mad enough they'll try to tack something on. Uh, but are they going to go into victory formation? Yeah, Good. Are. Good. They're doing the right thing because they've had a number of unsportsmanlike penalties here in the fourth quarter. And there you go as the quarterback Cooney backpedals. That should be it. I don't think they'll have to take another snap. Yeah. 
And the Holy field. Family Tigers have defeated the Fort Morgan Mustangs by a score of 35 to 13. The Mustang Post Game Show is brought to you by Advanced Agro Solutions. Make sure the nutrients you have purchased for your field are getting to your crops. Get a full plant of seed, food, and water with Advanced Agro Solutions. Call Dusty or Roxy, 970-571. 2024. Let's get to the scoring real quick here, then we'll get to the numbers as we have them. It was a 20-yard touchdown pass from Cooney to McNaughton in the first quarter, making it 7-0. Then McNaughton went for 71 yards. Still 14-0 first quarter in the second. J.J. Marquez found David Keller from 17 yards out to make it 14-7. And then Holy Family scored touchdowns from Cooney. An 8-yard run. McNaughton from 27 yards out made it 28 28- the seven, David Keller with a second touchdown of the game. First on the ground in the fourth quarter from two yards out. Conversion was no good. And then you had a 65-yard kickoff return by Connor Henkel. But you look at uh, Cooney's numbers through the air. He only threw for 105 yards. But the ground game was certainly good enough for Holy Family as McNaughton had 14 carries for 198 yards. Cooney had six carries for 52 and a touchdown. Dominic Gabriel did a nice job. Three carries for 44 yards. So Holy Family with close to 400 yards of offense. But look at Fort Morgan as you had 203 yards passing from J.J. Marquez. Kayshawn Johnson was the leading receiver as he caught... Eight passes for 100 yards. David Keller tonight, 72 yards in the ground. Marquez at 83. So that's 155 yards between both of them. Charlie Langford had 30 yards in the ground. Ben Fritzler had eight. So, you know, the ground game we thought could be a question. But the Mustangs, unofficially tonight, with about 400 yards of offenses, offenses were similar but, Kevin, a few too many mistakes in the opening quarter. Yeah, mistakes in the opening quarter, and then mistakes continued on when they got down in the red zone. Um, they let Holy Family get off to a, a really good fast start. You take those 14 points off, and it's a much closer ball game. But uh, to me, the, the tale of the game is that Fort Morgan has made a lot of improvement from week one, week two, week three. Um, and... You know, they're building for the future, and it's, it's bright with Marquez as that quarterback coming at, back for three more years. Brian, you'll have the uh, final say here, uh, maybe a final grade. It was a B at halftime uh, or going into the third quarter? Yeah, probably a B minus now. Um, you know, this was a team that, you know, Holy Family was supposed to win, and it was a dogfight. I mean, they gave them all they wanted. It, they did. broke it open here at the end. But the Mustangs have nothing to be, to be uh, sorry for. That's for darn sure. Holy Family moves to 5-3. and three. The Mustangs fall to 3-5. and five, And the Mustangs will have some time off. Their next game is in nine days when they take on Northfield. And that will be in Denver. Uh, the name of the stadium is not coming to me. I don't think all it's city. all. It is all city. I yeah, mean, it is all city stadium. We were there like about three years ago. Brian? Now, what I what I saw on our trip sheet was going to be at Northfield. Okay. I looked I looked on Google Maps and they have a nice football field. Okay, so no, no longer at All City. Okay, I don't so, believe so. Yeah, I think it was under construction back then when they were a new school. So, and I've been on that Northfield campus, but now before they had the football stadium. So that will be at Northfield, and that will be on October the 29th October 29th a Saturday morning at 11 o'clock we'll have it on B106 of the Eastern Plains Sports Network a reminder uh, Brush State Softball tomorrow at 1215 in the opening round of the 3A State Tournament from Aurora Sports Park that'll be on 1010 KSIR in the Eastern Plains Sports Network if they win that matchup at 1215 against Peak to Peak they'll play at 230 tomorrow in the quarterfinals against either the Academy or Lamar for Brian Nickel and Kevin Rohde, I'm John Beltran. The final score, once again tonight from Broomfield, Holy Family 35, Fort Morgan 13 on B106 and the Eastern Plains Sports Network.